What's up YouTube, it's Melton Metal Anthony and I got a quick tip for you. Today I'm gonna show you how you can correctly fix one railing picket when you have a loose rail. So you see this thing's pretty tight, especially over here. But as you work down here, this single railing that I've already chipped out, I'm sure you guys don't need to know how to chip out a railing, is loose. You know, so at the customer's request, we need to fix that. Now I'm gonna show you the quickest, most efficient way that I know to fix a single picket in a long line of rail. I simply just used my hammer that I use for chipping slag. As you can see now, it's a concrete chipper. And I knocked out some of the stuff. We're gonna use the shop vac here to suck the hole out. And we're not gonna be able to get it 100% clean like you would wanna do if you were using concrete. So instead, we're gonna be using a high strength anchoring epoxy. This shit doesn't care, it'll glue itself to whatever you put it on. So we're gonna go ahead, pump this into the hole, and uh, try to sturdy this rail up. That should be good. I'll come back and do more. All right, so I just put a, a most way up now and that should hold. Here's my proof of concept. This is it again. And as you can see, it's solid as a fucking rock. You know, you ain't, it ain't going nowhere now. All right, guys. And uh, here it is. It's hardened up. It's hard as a rock. It doesn't look the prettiest, but fucking rail don't move anymore, does it? So if you need to quickly repair a rail and it's only one leg, you're not trying to take them all out. I mean, even if you need to put them all in, it's just a bastard to pump all that epoxy in there. Just epoxy it. it worked out great. Uh, we did it on two holes with two different types of epoxy and both worked fucking great. What do you think? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, pretty good. That was the loose one. That, that worked out good. Today, I'm going to show you how to get consistent holes when making feet for your railing project. So it's really simple. I use my angle square right here. I just lay it out on my railing foot, just like so. Um, I find where it's evenly spaced because this is four inch and I'm using an inch and a half rail. Um, three quarter is where even is gonna be. But because I don't want the nut to run into the rail, what I did was I moved it over to half inch. And because we're gonna be using uh, quarter inch red heads or concrete anchors, uh, this is going to work out just fine. Uh, we're not going to have overlap because you don't want, you want it to look right. You don't want your nut hanging over the end of your foot. You also don't want it rubbing into your rail. So there's a fine balance you need to play. So once you've gone ahead, done your layout, you've drilled your first two holes, you've done all the math, and I'm not going to give you the math because every railing situation is going to be different. You do something real simple. You take your next foot. So you want to make one from uh, start to finish in completion right and then you take your next foot line it up um in my instance i'm going to use my jig table because it's a tool i have um if you don't have a jig table you can go ahead and just clamp this down to your metal table or whatever type of workstation you're working with and uh i'll go ahead get this thing all straightened out evened up and uh clamp it down and then now i'm using one of these pointed punches I set it so it goes right in the center of the hole. There's very little room for it to move, maybe a 30 second on either side, which you're not gonna see with the eye if you drill the hole a little crooked. And then uh, you just go ahead and punch it. Oops. All right. So as you can see, our holes lined up really well. We've got our two dots right there that we can use as our drill guide. And we're going to bring this over to the drill press and drill it out. So I've just got one of these cheapo Harbor Freight drill presses. This thing works out fine for what I'm doing here. I don't really need anything bigger or better than this. Um, and what I like to do is fire up the drill press. And I like to just score it like that. And 
And I do that on both sides. And then I go ahead and get my putting lubricant, give it a dot. And the reason I do that is because you see, you, can, you kind of lose the dot inside the lubricant. But now that we've drilled our little, or scored our holes, we won't lose the dot. The drill will find its own way. For a bit, I'm using, uh, I believe these are uh, high speed steel bits, which are okay. Um, ideally, um, if you have them and you have the money, you want to use cobalt bits. And you can always tell by that noise when it's about to get to the bottom of the hole, but you can see we're almost all the way through. We're starting to telegraph on the other side. You kick the drill press back on. And there we are, we have our foot for our uh, railing. So now we're gonna go over there, I'm just gonna show you how it looks on the rail. So there it is, perfect, it's beautiful. Lines up nicely. We got enough room to get our nut on. Now I got uh, five more of these to make and then, or actually four more of these to make and then my project's complete. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this short little video. I hope it helps you uh, do your layout and line up for your, your railing feet. Uh, nobody showed me this. I had to figure it out over the course of a few years. Um, I'm sure there's a more effective way to do this. Obviously, if you have an iron worker, that would be the best way because then you could just stamp these bastards out and then stamp the holes right in between them. But you're still going to need to do a layout like I did in order to get the holes accurately in the center of your foot. But anyway, guys, keep dragging her on, keep pushing me, keep doing what you do. I'm Mountain Metal Anthony. I hope you enjoyed this short little video, and I hope it helps you out in your railing project. All right, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.